Kids stay in school, don't bend tubes. All right, today's a big day at Salvage of Savage. We are gonna start the roll cage build. All right, guys, so what we got here is one and five eighths DOM. We wanted to get Kromali, but apparently there's a shortage in the USA, and for our time frame, we can't really get it. So we're gonna do DOM. The truck is packing on the pounds, but we gotta do this for safety. So this is gonna be just as good strength-wise. So what we're gonna do is take one piece in. I'm gonna start measuring for the main hoop. So I'm gonna measure total height, top width, total bottom width. Then I'm gonna add all those together and get my rough cut for the tubing. And then from there, I'll start measuring all my bends. Right now, I want a total width of the base, the total height, and I'll figure out all the angles. This is the old school way. It'll give me about a foot and a half or two foot extra on the piping. So I'd rather have some material I can cut off than try to make it perfect the first time. I'm gonna go cut the tube, we'll level it out and start marking it up. And then from there, start putting some bends on it. This 90, we have to bend this kick down on the same angle. So we're just gonna use levels and we gotta keep all other two bends in the same plane. If not, it'll kick the legs down or up when we put it in. So we're measuring now and I'm looking off the die and that looks perfect to me. So we're gonna go ahead and bend this one at 31 degrees. We got the main hoop done. So we're gonna go fit the hoop in and then I made these plates. The bottom of the base is gonna go to the floor and I made these plates come up here for that second riser. So the whole thing will be welded in. So this is gonna slide in. So now's the hard part. We're gonna go put it in, see how it fits and see what we got. Look at that. Like a glove. Oh, I'm stuck. I got the main hoop in. As you see, uh, I'm gonna have this plate right here. It's gonna tie this one in, this is for the structural. And then from right here, we go to the perch. It's not centered right now, but we'll get it there. And then from there, she tucks up all nice to the A-pillar. Comes all the way up, rides top of the, the roof. Rides the other side, comes all the way down. So now, that was the fun part. Now I'm gonna tack it in and I'm gonna start making my other bars. So I bent this one inch tube, put a little slight little kick to it. Then I cut these custom tabs. What this is gonna do is it's gonna ride in here. You can see from here in the back, it's just allowing me to run my seatbelt straight back. The results themselves come in. They're gonna come up through the holes and come right back here. So God forbid if you're ever an emergency or the car ever hit anything and you have to actually use your seatbelts, it's gonna pull straight back. I just wanted to get the pull point higher for these holes. Now once I get everything built in the main hoop, I'm gonna take everything out, fully weld it, and get the main hoop in and start building off from there. We are jamming. I did forward bars, the main hoop, some seatbelt brackets, and now I'm doing the door bars. Our seats are kind of high. I don't wanna make this thing impossible to get into if you wanna drive on the street and go cruising around. So I'm gonna do a little bit of artistic flair, and it has to go to the main hoop, and structurally it has to be between six inches from the bottom. That way if this bar tries to ring out, it's close to the weld in the bottom of the floor, which gets it more integrity. So this gives me just a few options, but I have an idea. I wanna come off the main hoop, and then I wanna dive it down, follow the contour of the seat. Then that way he could rest his, his shoulders and his arms over it, and it's a little bit more comfy than just having like a straight bent bar that follows the contour of the door. So I'm gonna call Mikey over, we're gonna get him, I'm gonna do some measurements, and then kind of get an idea of where I have to cross between the seat. Mr. Rolls, can I borrow you for a second? So I'm gonna get Mikey in the seat, find out where his shoulders and his elbows lay, and from there I'll intersect that angle. So I'm gonna say his shoulders are right here, Jeez, look, he's all poofed up over here. And then his elbows. Let's go elbow mark right here. So that means I have to have this bar cross between this angle right here. And I gotta make it somehow comfy for him so he can get his feet over there. So that's gonna be my uh, engineering challenge for today. So 
So I made my first two bends and I made the bar a little extra long so I can trim it up. I wanna raise the front because I wanna put a bar down here. So I'm actually gonna kick this up. It's gonna make for a really aggressive notch, but I think it's gonna look more aesthetically pleasing. So I'm gonna come over here with my test eye, kind of follow the contour of this right here, the seat. So it'll have this nice flow and bend up and we're still protecting your shoulder. So it's all in the right spot. I wanna go and duplicate this and make a mirror image of it. Cut it, get it where I want, measure height on both sides. And as long as these are both symmetrical, it'll look good when you look at it. Both door bars are mirror imaged. They're exactly the same. So now I can go ahead and mock one, cut it, trim it, fit it, take all the measurements from there and duplicate it on the other side. So the time has come to do the deed. I know this is either gonna make a lot of you guys stoked or it's gonna piss a lot of you guys off. I'm actually gonna drill a hole in this precious, beautiful, beautiful cab. Evenly space them. And that's where our back bars are gonna come down. To be honest with you, I just think it's a better look to go through the cab than it is to go through the rear glass or plexi. That way you can actually use rear glass if you wanted to. So now I'm gonna measure it. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna hope I get a dead nuts. And then we're gonna have an entry point for our tubes. Now I'm gonna measure for the angles that go to the cage. It's gotta be kind of a aggressive swoop and I wanna have it come straight down to one of those plot points right there. This is the way it's gonna come out and I'm gonna dive that straight into that miter and do a little swoop in the bottom. The moment of truth. Got the tubes halfway sanded, everything's mitered, everything's nice and tight. We're gonna run right to the back of the frame. I got the main hoop where I want it. So now, with my boy Andrew, What's up? he's gonna hold the tubes, I'm gonna tack this bad boy in. I'm gonna make like a flat stock brace to the back here, and another one that goes forward to this tube, because I have to, with all the tacks, slide the whole thing forward and get it right about here, so I can weld around the seams in the back of these tubes. I'm gonna have Bebop over here help me out. Look at this guy, look how handsome this guy is. That's here. so weird, don't do that. <laughs> you just felt me up. <laughs> Now I'm gonna go ahead and tack all four corners, tack the back corners, go around and wall each tube to the frame. And then from there, I'm gonna work up and do my plates. And then I gotta TIG weld these upper and dash bars. And we're doing door bars and we're done. Then I gotta do the front bars too, but we're getting pretty close there. I'm also gonna design some brackets for our A pillar here. I'm gonna do some sort of a gusset out of 16 gauge. It's gonna ride down this. What do you think? What do you think is a good pattern there, Tim? I think we should do like little cutouts of Donnie heads. Oh, Smiling. did you hear that? I'm gonna trace this out, figure out how I want it to ride in, and then from there we'll do a design. Work late, we got our dimple dies in. This is not only for beauty, it's actually to help support this A-pillar in case anything were to happen. We got old Battle Larry on the starboard side, which we call the passenger side. So now I'm gonna go and take this all up, stitch weld this in, take this in. But before I go and do that, I wanna build some more stuff so I can weld everything in one shot. 
We got the status seat in here. I bent it all up to make it fit. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exit. This is so we can go do some road racing. So I'm gonna do an X here, make this real aggressive, boys and girls. I got all dandy with the bends. Of course, if anything would have happened, we would possibly crunch those bends. So we're gonna put an X in here to stiffen this guy up. Then we're gonna do a Gus in here to protect the second bend. And then we are well on our way to doing some burnouts and some howdy doody. And so, yeah, let's get to it. We made it pretty, now we're gonna make it strong. What a journey it has been. We were killing it over here. We're crunch time. I think we got 13 weeks in a haul last to SEMA. And look what we got. So we get the back tubes done, crossbar, overhead bars done. I gotta do some finish welding and then I also have to run two bars for the front of the chassis. But we can't do that yet because we have to get our coilovers, put those where we want them and then build the cage around that and then build all the tabs off that. So that's, that's gonna wait. But as of right now, hoops done. Some of the aesthetic stuff is done. I'm actually gonna add some stuff here in the back. We're gonna do a cross tube from back to here down to the main hoop. That way this whole back chassis is triangulated. And then other than that, I just finished welding a couple more tubes and welded door bars in. But I am absolutely stoked how this came out. Had some crying, had some blood, but she's getting there. What do you think, Tim? I have to admit, when you say you're gonna build a roll cage, I didn't believe you're gonna do it. <laughs> Me either. The main hoop is really the hardest part in any roll cage. And the way you got everything really nice and tight on the sides, everything's nice and even. Now, safety is a big thing with a build like this, especially with the amount of power that this thing's gonna have. So I'm pretty impressed with the cage work, honestly. I hate doing cages. They suck, they're super labor intensive. So if you guys have any questions for Donnie how to build a roll cage, don't ask me, ask him. Leave it in the comment section below. You know, to be honest, I messed up a little bit. I wanted to go through the top here perfectly, but I had to move the whole cage forward, which you saw to weld it. And well, I had to cut the bottom of the tabs out, so. I barely got into the window frame. The window can still go in there, but I had to cut all this out. I was trying to avoid this. I wanted this to be perfect, but I just couldn't get the swoop in with that five inch die radius. We'll put a piece of 16 gauge in here and get the, put the rear window back in. The cool part is this will have a full window without any bars like going through it or anything like that. So it'll actually look really nice. The next episode, Donnie's gonna continue on in the tubing work on the back. And then we hopefully get our coilovers in soon so we can start tying in all of our suspension and getting everything to work with that as well. What do we do now? Thank you. Toodaloo boo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, keep, in, keep tabs on us. So we're gonna keep on rocking and rolling.